Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Becca and we have a very late July favorites video. I apologize, I sort of took a week off of filming unexpectedly. I didn't plan ahead very well, so sorry about that, but we are back. And today we're talking about my July favorites. So I have had quite a few plants sort of stick out to me that haven't before. And that is partially because I've been looking for spider mites. <laughs> I discovered spider mites recently in this area. And so because of that, I've been doing a little bit of extra looking around and whenever that happens I just sort of realize like ooh, it would really suck if that plant had spider mites because I really like it we are revisiting some plants that I don't think that I've talked about in a while and some products as well so let's just get into it first of all I wanted to give a little unboxing update on my philodendron 69686 I hope that I got that number correct but the leaf that was emerging when I unboxed it is now out and about it looks absolutely beautiful basically perfect and I am really really happy about it so I have been looking around for this plant for a long time I saw one actually at flower farm uh, when I visited a couple months ago or if I feel like it was more than a couple months ago it was like probably six months ago at this point but I saw one there I thought it was amazing it wasn't for sale but it was the first time I had ever really seen one in person and sorry if you can hear my dog's toy honking in the background it's Cooper <laughs> anyway I hope that doesn't disturb your dogs but yeah it was my first time seeing one in person and that really solidified to me that this is definitely a plant that I would want and I think that that is something really important with wishlist plants is try to see it in person before you're going to buy it to decide if you actually really want it because with philodendron like this or just like I don't know any plant in general that you can't see like at a big box store or even at your like local nursery like I don't think that I've ever seen a local nursery carry this plant specifically but my local nurseries carry a lot of other you know exotic rare plants uh, but not this one so I hadn't been able to see it yet and so when I saw it um, and at flower farm in Kansas Yes, it, it was solidified in my mind that this is a plant that I would want. And I'm really happy that I waited a while to find a good price for it. I feel like, oh, well, how much was this? I think $75 or something like that. I feel like that was a really good price. Also have to say that the pricing of plants is very subjective. I got a comment a couple weeks ago saying that I paid like way too much for an El Choco Red. Like this doesn't make any sense, blah, blah, blah. El Choco Reds are very expensive, or at least they have been in the past, and I found a really good price that I felt comfortable with, and it was from a seller that I wanted to support. At the end of the day, what you pay for your plants is really on you. Like, it's your responsibility to do the proper research on the market of that plant at the current moment. What are people charging for it right now, and how does that price compare? I have shown in the past, I did an online shopping video where I showed you you know, several plants that you guys were looking for, and then I found a few different listings with a variety of prices. And by doing that, you can just sort of see what the current market is and then make an informed decision at that point. And if the current market is not something that you're willing to spend, then don't, just wait a little bit because it's likely that the price will come down, which is what happened with this one. You know, I was finding it online for sure, but not for a price that I was willing to pay. So I found it for a price I was willing to pay from a business that I wanted to support. And if I paid maybe a little bit extra, that's okay because I was supporting someone that I wanted to support at the end of the day. So not that I'm sitting here like justifying how much I pay for things because, you know, people can judge me. I really don't care, but I want people to know that I make informed buying decisions and I want to encourage other people to do that too. So that's why I share how much things cost. That's why I share the process of finding plants and that's why I share about responsible plant ownership, especially on the financial side, because it's very easy to just buy a bunch of plants and fill up your home with things that you don't really love all that much. But we are going to talk about fungus gnats because fungus gnats are an ever evergreen problem in a houseplant parent's home. There are people who have perfected the art of not having fungus gnats and I envy those people. I think I had a really good handle on it for a super long time and then I ran out of my systemic insecticide so I was using SNS 209 
and every single time I watered, I was using that. It's basically an organic insecticide uh, made with rosemary oil, and it's by Arbico Organics. It's really nice. I am going to be reordering it, probably like a big bottle so that I can have a lot of it, but I'll link it down below if you guys are interested. It's the systemic that I suggest, and when I was using that, I wasn't having any problems with pests, and well, let's say minimal problems with pests and pretty much no fungus gnats. And then as soon as I ran out, now I've got spider mites and fungus gnats are <laughs> evergreen. So anyway, this is a catchy. This is something that I use passively to take care of my fungus gnats. And um, there's lots of different ways to get rid of them. I've made a video about it before. Some of the advice is a little bit outdated. I will say don't put your soil in the oven. <laughs> Um, but that video was more so me just sharing ways that I have found people to get rid of fungus gnats And it's one of my most popular videos it might be fun to react to that video, but let me know if you want to see that maybe <laughs> But anyway, this is a catchy. I found this device on Amazon a while ago I don't remember who I saw first have one of these it is basically a little gnat vacuum so what happens is it has a little blue light underneath here and it will attract the bugs to the light. And this also works for like fruit flies and things like that too. Just any bugs in your home, they will be attracted to this. So they go in to this little area because they're attracted to the light and then the fan sucks them in so that they have to go inside of this area. And then they usually get spit out onto a sticky trap. And you can see that this sticky trap has quite a bit of activity. The only downside to catchy is that you pretty much have to use their sticky traps although i'm sure that you could cut to size your own sticky traps if you buy like the packs of sticky trap sheets i used to buy those and i started getting a different type of sticky trap which are this sticky trap the butterfly and i hate these so much it's just that i ordered so many of them when i bought them that i'm still going through them and you know it's just unfortunate it's just the reason why i don't like this one is because it's really hard to get the paper off of the sticky trap so it you just get your hands all gunked up and it's just like gross but i have a, quite a few of these out and about right now i probably need to do like another round um just to help out killing those adult fungus gnats but you know when you're killing fungus gnats you want to attack the larva in the soil and the adults if you're just attacking the adults it'll slow down the infestation but it's not going to eradicate it really the only way to eradicate it is if you're getting the larva and the adults at the same time all this said i love my catchy it's a great passive way to have um, fungus gnat traps without actually seeing the yellow sticky traps like all over my house downside is it can only go in one spot and you have to buy well, you have to buy the catchy traps, but I just keep them underneath. Um, ew, where did that? Oh, it's up here. I thought I lost it. <laughs> I just had an ew David moment. That's funny. Ew, no David. It plugs into a wall. It has like a USB thing and it's pretty easy. Okay, the next plant that I want to talk about is this little situation. So this is not a singular plant, but this these are two plants. So we have a Euphorbia obesa the baseball euphorbia. And then we have a, oh my gosh, I had the name and then I lost it as soon as I said the name of this one. You can see right here, after so, so long, it's putting out a new piece. It originally came with just this one and then it put out this piece right here and then now a third. And then you can see this obesa is getting like taller. This like extra right here, this like skinny bit that is growing up is new. Basically the obesa just gets like taller and taller and like it widens too. So I think that I will probably, I don't know, I kind of want to keep these together, but at the same time, I think they probably need to be potted separately. But do you know what I did to get this to start growing? I watered it. Yeah, I watered it more often and it started growing which is genuinely the silliest thing I think I've ever said on my channel, but cacti and succulents and euphorbia, all of these things can sort of just like chill out and like exist, like they're like frozen in time, unless they're getting water and light and the things that they need. And you know, if they do put out growth, it's probably not gonna be impressive growth unless they're getting exactly what they need. And with these two, for some reason, I just kind of forgot about them for a long time. And so I put them next to my sink, which is a tip that I have been sharing for a long time. If there is a plant that you want to give more attention to and you want to do better, 
put it in a place where you go often and you will take care of that plant more often because there are certain areas in my home like in my office i have some plants in there i can't keep anything high maintenance in that room because it's lucky if i water in there once a month to be completely honest but i just have like sense of area in there so it's not the biggest deal but yeah this was sitting in there as well because you know it's a big big window so it was getting lots of light but it wasn't getting any water and now it's in a different south window unfortunately covered by a tree but you know it's still getting something but it's getting water and it is growing now so anyway that's all i have to say about this this will be moving out to my greenhouse eventually when that's done like all my cactus will be because i want them to get as much sun as possible to get as much growth as possible but uh, for now it sits next to my sink and I water it probably like once a week maybe every five days or so and it's sitting in the tanks cactus mix so the cactus mix from tanks green stuff is very 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 chunky and if you've never seen it I highly suggest that you buy a bag I have it linked down below if you're interested it's definitely the best cactus mix I've ever used and it is used by the desert botanical gardens in Tucson and also I think up in Phoenix so I mean the experts use this cactus soil and actually when I visited the Tucson botanical gardens I looked in their pots of potted cactus and I saw the soil. So it's awesome, it's awesome. Okay, quickly on a not sponsored note, I wanted to share my Warby Parker prescription sunglasses. So I just wanted to update on these because I bought them a couple months ago. And of course you guys see me wearing my glasses every single day. But I wanted to share that getting prescription sunglasses changed my life. Like, I don't know why I took so long to do this. I'm quite annoyed that I didn't do it sooner because it has been so nice to like just not have to suffer in the sunlight with my glasses. And I have like eye diseases that run in my family, like degenerate eye disease. Number one is like the, the biggest one. And so protecting my eyes at a young age from the sun is really, really important. And I'm I'm sad that I didn't do that until now really but I mean it's not like I've never worn sunglasses before but you know what I mean like there's been so many instances where I couldn't wear sunglasses because I wear glasses and I don't want to use like transitional frames or lenses so I, I just didn't or I'd have to wear contacts and I don't really like wearing contacts all the time because they dry out my eyes it's a whole thing my, my eyes are high maintenance so getting prescription sunglasses has been the best if you're interested I would highly suggest Warby Parker. They have a lot of really cute styles. I will have Warby Parker linked down below. It's not a sponsored situation right now. I've just used, I've genuinely used Warby Parker since like 2015 and I love them and it's just like my favorite sponsor in the world and like so cool that they do sponsor my channel but they're not sponsoring this video. I don't know, I just wanted to update you guys about the situation because there's been a few people that have asked me like, hey, were the sunglasses worth it? Absolutely, they were worth it. I definitely recommend. Okay, now on the note of plants that I kind of forgot about and I rediscovered and were so happy with. This is my Begonia Brevramosa, and she is just a stunner. Look at these leaves. I have to admit, I'm not a big fan of colorful plants, but this one definitely has stolen my heart. Cane begonia in general are so beautiful. I love them so much. I have a cane begonia trellis and really only one of them <laughs> is thriving. It's my begonia miss mummy. But this one I wanted to put over there, but she's a little bit too special and she was not doing great in the ambient humidity of my home. So I put her in the greenhouse cabinet and we have all of these new leaves. As you can see, there were a few leaves down here. This one was already kind of a little bit stringy, but this one, it did have some leaves. This one's probably on its way out soon. But the point is, it's putting out a lot of really beautiful new growth and it's getting taller. And I just think it's so beautiful. Cane begonia, I find, are pretty easy to take care of. This one needs more humidity than the usual cane begonia. I find that cane begonia are pretty good with ambient humidity. But this one needs a little bit more for the leaves to be like a nice size and not be curly and you know it just it just needs a little bit more so if you're interested in this one who sells uh tennessee tropical sells this one pretty often and other places too but that's where i got mine it's where i buy a lot of my plants i really like tennessee tropicals and i purchased two of them and just potted them together in this pot from terra vita they're a beautiful ceramicist um couple so i just love their work and i have a lot of their pots anyway begonia brevermosa she made the list this month and i'm i'm really happy about it Okay, now this is a bit bigger. It's a little heavy, 
but I wanted to show you uh, my late summer wreath. So this is a terracotta pot wreath with succulents. They're fake succulents and it's not finished yet. I currently mostly just have the pots on here and I put some of the plants in just to see like what it would look like. But yeah, this is this and it's kind of heavy to hold up. So, oh, I can prop it with my knee maybe, maybe. <laughs> okay, so this is something that I, was that just a plant? Okay, it's just a plant. I'm like so terrified that the pots are gonna fall. None of the pots have fallen for the record. But anyway, this is something that I made with my patrons this last month for Christmas in July. And it was so much fun. I made this and one other person made it and then a few people just like chilled out with us and like cleaned their craft room or just like crocheted and it was a freaking blast. I'm gonna put this down now. If you didn't know, I do have a Patreon where I share exclusive content and polls and things like that where you can help me decide what my next videos will be. We do plant clinic Zoom classes and then also we do craft classes now, which is something new that I'm offering. And I'm really excited about it. And I hope that if you're interested, you will check it out. It's linked down below. You also get access to a Discord community of a bunch of really awesome people who just help each other with our plant problems. And it's really nice. So if you are interested, I will have a link down below. Obviously there's no pressure to join, but if you just want to support me in a new way and get access to some extra content, it's a really great way to do it. And we make really fun, beautiful things like this terracotta wreath. And this next thing we're gonna be making is this um, crocheted plant. We're going to have a guest teacher. So I'm super excited about this one. Okay, the next plant that I want to show you is my Syngonium Frosted Heart. This plant, you guys, this plant is amazing. <laughs> this is a plant that I have rediscovered because of the spider mite situation and also because I got a macro lens, which I will show you in a second. And somebody asked to see this one up close and I've never ever thought like, oh, let me go look at that plant up close. And so I put the macro lens up to it and I was like, oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Like she did not come to play. It's just beautiful. Let me show you a close up so that you can maybe see a little bit more. Look at those beautiful, like silvery green leaves. Oh my gosh. They mature to have a little bit more green on them in some cases, like this one's a bit of a darker green, but this is an older leaf too and it still has quite a bit of that silvery color, but it is just absolutely beautiful. I used to be a huge fan of Syngonium and my Syngonium video is probably one of my most popular, but I really don't have that many Syngonium anymore because they are spider mite magnets. And when I had that big spider mite outbreak in my home, pretty much all my Syngonium had it and it did not feel worth it to rescue a lot of them. A lot of them I tried, but some of them I just couldn't do it, but that was years ago. So I have maybe three Syngonium currently and I used to have, I think maybe like 10, which is crazy. So anyway, I just love this plant so much. I think it's beautiful. I have it growing up a plank right now, and I don't think that it's attached to the plank. No, it's not attached to the plank, but it definitely has flattened itself against the plank, which is really great. I love to see that happen. You know, a lot of my plants haven't attached yet, but they are using it as a leaning post, which has helped the plant to continuously put out really beautiful big growth, which is exciting. I love knowing that they know Know that there's something for them to lean on because I think it just makes their growth so much better and so much fuller. I feel like this plant is like, like I got it and it was all down here and then now we have the next layer which is right here and it's all very close to each other, you know? Like it's not stretching to try to climb on anything because it already knows there's something here for it. So love this plant right here. If you don't have one, I would suggest trying to find one. They are super, super lovely and easy to care for, truly a very easy Syngonium. Okay, so I wasn't planning on sharing this, but since I just mentioned it, this is my macro lens and it actually comes with a macro and a wide angle lens, I suppose. So if you have the iPhone or just any phone, I think, I think it'll work if you don't have an iPhone too. Like, why did I just say that? So <laughs> all I do is I put this over my bottom camera here and I start at the camera and I'm able to see, see, look at this. I am in wide angle without putting my phone into wide angle because if you have 
this um, iPhone. I have the iPhone 12 Pro Max, I think, I, 12 Pro Max. If you put it in the wide angle, the quality is diminished quite a bit. And so if you have a, a wide angle like this, this lens thing, which was like 40 bucks, the, the quality doesn't get diminished. So that's one good thing. But if you screw off that part, you have the macro lens. And with this, you can look at plants like way, way up close. I've been able to look at spider mites up close. I have flat mites on some of my Hoya, which are those tiny, tiny, tiny uh, mites that are attacking Hoya pretty much exclusively. I don't think that they really like other things in my collection, but I know that I have at least two Hoya that have it right now. And they are so tiny that you literally cannot see them at all with your naked eye. Like with spider mites, if the infestation is bad enough, you can see it. But with these, I have a really bad infestation of flat mites and I could not see them at all until I got this micro lens or this macro lens. Let me show you with my nail. Okay, look, that shows my nail in like really good detail that you definitely would not be able to achieve. Here's my ring. You would not be able to achieve this kind of detail with like your eyes. So I highly suggest checking this out. I'll link it down below if you're interested. And when I bought it, I had no idea that it came with a wide angle lens. That was just like a bonus. And I'm actually very happy with it because it makes it really easy to film like TikToks and things like that of things that I'm doing because I am on TikTok. If you're interested, De La Plants on TikTok. <laughs> we are getting down to the wire and I've been talking for a really long time. So we are going to quicken the pace here. So this is a Stromanth Magic Star and I absolutely love this plant. So I bought this at the same time that I bought a Calathea White Fusion, I think it was, or White Star or something. It was really beautiful, but it died pretty quickly. It got spider mites really fast. And this one actually got spider mites around the same time and I was treating them both and this one pulled through but the other one was too far gone, it just kept getting them. I have to admit, I don't think that it looks like absolutely fantastic, but I have to say that it has come back basically from the dead. Like it was not doing well for a very long time. And now we have all of these leaves and that just feels like a really big accomplishment. Like they're not huge leaves by any means, they're kind of long and skinny, but I think that's just because the plant kind of had to start over because it, again, it wasn't doing very well for a while. And I cut off a lot of that old growth and just sort of let the plant sit there for a while. And it's been really great. And I love this plant. I think it is so beautiful. I don't have any stromanth besides this one. I don't think I ever have had stromanth beside this one. I think stromanth is in the Marantisiae family. So it's pretty similar care to Calathea and um, Gapertia and stuff like that. So I would say though that this one is a little bit more along the lines of Gapertia. Like it is pretty easy. It'll curl up like this, like a little taco when it is thirsty and you know, water it when it's thirsty and it should be fine. I water it with tap water as well. And you know, some of the tips do look a bit burnt. That's probably why, but some of these leaves are truly a work of art. Look at that one. Like that is just darling. It also has like little speckles and like freckles on it too. I just think that it is so lovely. So if you are considering getting this one, I am a person who does not do well with plants like this. And this one is doing just fine. I have a small one. So if it does die, it doesn't hurt as much, but I've had this for over a year, I think at this point, And I really, really enjoy it. Okay, the last thing that I have to share with you is a little bit of a confession. So you guys know that I am anti-watering can. Guess what? I bought a watering can. <laughs> okay, I feel like the reason that I didn't like watering cans for so long was because they are so expensive and for what? You know, like actual functional watering cans like this one, I think this was probably like 15 or $20, which was absolutely insane. Like I was not happy to pay for it, but I bought it because I wanted to like water things that my hose couldn't reach or something like that. I don't remember. I never ended up using it for that purpose. And one day I was like, you know what? I'm using the plant potty to water my plants. That's the five gallon bucket that I water with. Uh, I get questions about that too. It's called the plant potty I'll link it down below for you. But anyway, I just realized that it's been sitting around so I might as well just use it because I was having to refill my little jug from my old orange juice so many times 
and I just realized, you know, this is a pretty big container. Let's see what I can do. And this lasts so much longer than the little orange juice containers that I was using before. I mean, I still love that thing. I do still use it periodic periodically, but this has changed my life. And the reason that I'm comfortable using the watering can inside is because I have the plant -a potty for all of the water to drain into from the plant. Like I'm not using my watering can to go around and water the plants until it fills up the saucers. Point is, <laughs> I'm using a watering can now in conjunction with my plant -a potty and the watering table that I made on my YouTube channel a couple weeks ago. And it's been really awesome and I completely understand why people use them because it carries a lot of water and I don't have to go refill my little jug like seven times during my watering days. So it's made watering a lot better for me and I really enjoy it. So for everybody out there who has told me to get a watering can for so long, I should have listened sooner. So thank you so much for that. <laughs> All right, you guys, that is my long-winded August, or no, no, not, not August, it is August currently. That is my long-winded July favorites video. You can tell that I haven't filmed in a while because I just talked for way too long, so Editing Mecca is gonna have a field day with this one. Uh, if you are loving my content, <laughs> that feels like such a silly thing to say. <laughs> if you liked the vibes of this video, consider subscribing. I would love to have you around here more often. If you watch my videos a lot and you're not actually subscribed, double check that you're subscribed. Like sometimes that's happened to me. I thought I was subscribed to someone because I liked their videos and they always came up on my page. And then I realized I never hit subscribe. So maybe check that out. <laughs> oh, okay. I gotta go. Thank you so much for watching you guys. I will see you in the next one. Bye.